I want you to understand before we go on why we are here. We are not here because we just like the songs. We are not here because it just feels good. We are here because we are in a war. And every time we come into the corporate presence of the true and living God, yokes break in our life that free us even more to just simply keep our gaze on Jesus. That's why we are here. I want you all to understand, some of you who found yourselves in deep bondage and have struggled over the years to come out of it, perhaps it was done to you as a child, perhaps it ran in the family, Perhaps there were things that you were told was normal and then you find out it's contrary to the word. I want to tell you, look onto the hills from where your help comes from. Your redemption is nigh. You are actually in a better place than those born into the Western church where they've been born into lukewarmness. They've been born into a sense of complacency. They've been born into religion. Those of you, as hard as it is, Coming out of deep occultism, your reality is actually more of the reality than the reality of those in the Western church where they have been born into religion. Because being born into religion and the watered down Western church means that a complacency has set in. And when the devil comes in like a flood, we welcome him like an angel of light. And when the devil comes in and tampers with our emotions and we think we have a right to be feeling good good about life when God says he gives us the joy of the Lord however that joy requires us to look ahead Jesus said but for the sake of the cross but for the sake of the joy and in carrying the cross it wasn't some it wasn't it was not he wasn't feeling it while he was carrying the cross, but for the joy that lay ahead. Wasn't necessarily a joy he was feeling then and there with the cross he was following. But the Western church has, has programmed us into this feel good thing that must feel good in the moment that we want to feel good. And I want to tell you all something. You mightn't feel good till years down the road, but but. But for what is laying ahead, you're standing and you're running that course. And I'm saying in your walk with the Lord as a single person, in your walk with the Lord as a married person, in your walk with the Lord as a parent, in your walk with the Lord as a teacher, sometimes what God has promised us, we will be like the heroes of the faith that will stand and watch what they haven't experienced as yet. That's the call. That's the call. If you want to follow Yeshua then you've, of the Bible, then you've got to understand he did not promise us in the moment of time that we are in that we will experience this happiness and this joy. We could, but we don't have to. It doesn't mean that you're in the wrong place. Sometimes you're in the wrong place by the feeling things that you want to feel good about when you're literally in a cobweb of divination you're in a cobweb of deception you're in a cobweb of defeat and you're praying and you're praying and you're praying and you're not breaking through because quite frankly the word says my people like it so the systems are broken sin is in the camp we have forgotten what holiness is we cannot reap what god has promised us through holiness if we do not sow holiness and repentance in our lives. What I want to say is very simply, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. If you look at the word, for the joy that was set before him. If you look up Hebrews 12, 2, and you take it in the, in the other translations, okay? We look away from the natural realm and we focus our attention and expectation onto Jesus who birthed faith within us and who leads us forward into faith's perfection. His example is this, because his heart was focused on the joy of knowing, okay? that you would be his. He endured the agony of the cross. I could read the other translations for you. I just need you to grasp something here today. Nowhere in scripture does it say that at the moment in time that we want the joy, that we are not necessarily going to feel the joy. Nowhere in scripture does it say so. It doesn't mean 
you are not going to experience joy at times in your life. But you endure because you know what the blessings are going to be. And some of the heroes of the faith never got what was promised to them. But they knew they were in this world but not of this world. And some point in time in the future... They would experience that joy and it might be in heaven where there's no more weeping, where there's no more tears. That's correct. You might have to wait till you reach heaven or you may experience it here on earth. Nobody's saying you cannot experience that joy. But if you do things because you want the joy now, some of you are not going to have that endurance to persevere because the moment you don't get what you're asking for, you're going to find yourself coming off that narrow road, resorting to fleshly responses. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Every moment of every day when Jesus walked the earth, go and read about him. There was hunger, there was thirst, there were people that were scattered. He had to minister to them. And he would go and be set apart and he would hear cries to his father. It was a life that was hard. But for the joy that lay before him, he carried the cross. So it says here in the Amplified, looking away from all that will distract to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, he for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross. This is the posture of the saints. S saints. This is the posture. And the Western church has fed us a lie that come and eat the ice cream now. You're going to get it now. You're going to feel good now. Saints, you might feel good now. You mightn't feel good now. Is it Jesus who you want? Because the next life is what matters. Are we saying that we go through a depression in this life? I say to you that when you follow Jesus, you might be, in fact, you will experience trouble. But he has overcome. He gives you a way through him to overcome. And sometimes it's going to be harassing. Sometimes it's going to be overwhelming. But there is a strength and an endurance that he puts in you where you will be an overcomer. John 16, 33. Just so that you understand what the word says. And everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you. And will give you great confidence as you rest in me. For in this unbelieving world, you will experience trouble and sorrows. But you must be courageous for I have conquered the world. So wherever you've read, there won't be any problems. You need to know you will have trouble. I'm not gloating. I'm not saying it without feeling the pain, but this is the reality of our walk, y'all. We have got to stop losing time because we have troubles. We can get prayer and help, but we keep going. We keep going because we understand that the things that we want, we may not have, and things will happen to cause us to want to turn back. But the fact of the matter is, he says we must be courageous, which means when we rest in him, when we learn what that means, we will face life. The righteous, as bold as a lion, we will be courageous. We will be hope bold. It is a work of the Holy Spirit, but there will be trouble around us. So I want to say one more time to those who will listen to this later, and have come out of the depths of the occult and feel as if nobody understands what they're going through. It's Listen, let me tell you something. The Western church don't understand nothing about what you're going through because they have not been taught that the part of the Bible that says do not be unaware of the schemes of Satan is an important line. We do not war against flesh and blood. We war against wickedness in high places. They've forgotten all of that and become complacent. I want you to know 
that in spite of how challenging it is, nobody wishes that anybody would, would, would in their early life worship Satan. Nobody's wishing that, but I have to tell you something. Because you are aware of how dangerous it is to sin and how dangerous, try and talk to a person coming out of divination and tell them, it's okay to do a little white lie. They will tell you that will set them back so far. They can't afford no sin in their life. Do, these are the people who tell you nothing is going to cause me to even turn back. People could do what they want to me. I'm following Jesus. Those people who know that only through Jesus can they come out of bondage and they are not going back into bondage. Those are the radical ones. Am I saying that those who are not or have not come out of divination is not radical? I will say in my experience, they're still trying to get radical. I'm telling you, they don't understand radical. They say they're radical. But the truth is, if somebody spits on you today, you radical, you wipe your face, you hug them and you keep going. That's radical. Do you understand me? That's radical. You know what radical is? You're misunderstood. You go to Jesus with it. And whoever, whoever misunderstood you will never know that you feel misunderstood. You'll take it to Jesus and you will go on with your life through Christ. That's radical. Do you understand? Those are the things that those who are coming out of radical bondage know that's how they have to live. So us in the Western church who might not have experienced any of this or so we think. So we think because a lot of us don't know how much the Freemasonry has, has damaged and the Queen of Heaven and the Catholicism has damaged our life and the generational line is affecting us. The truth of the matter is this. We have, a, we, we don't even understand that there is a complacency that we don't consider complacency because that's all we know is what we have inherited. And I'm here to tell you, God is leveling the playing field. He does not have a definition of holiness for one and a definition of holiness for the other. It has never changed. Unfortunately, for lack of knowledge, many are going to perish. But if you are hearing the word over and over, holiness repentance, holiness, blessed are you because there's no other way to come out of bondage, no other way to make it but for the joy that lay before him. No other way to see him face to face one day when there will be no more weeping, no more tears and that joy is what we will experience for what we have been created for. For why he has given us a soul that desires him more than anything else. So I want to encourage you today, if you've come to Tarion and those who would have come after and those who might listen to this afterwards, I want you to know that don't forget yourself and let Jesus be out of your thoughts. The fact is you are going to endure for the joy that's, lay, that's set before you. If you don't have the joy now, that's okay. Satan can't make you turn back because you don't feel good. Because your choice to follow Jesus is more than feeling good. Your choice to follow Jesus is because he is, he was, he always will be. He is the truth, he is the way. He is the way, the truth, and the life, the alpha, the omega. There's no other but Jesus. And that's why you're following him. Not because... There are certain things you get and certain things you want to feel. You're not following him for that reason. And I want to let you know, there's some bondages people are in, not even the depths of divination, less than that. Oh, it will go just so. If we could just simply understand we are following him because of who he is. Nothing more and nothing less. So, Father, I thank you, O oh God, for all that you're doing and all that you will continue to do. May we stop being slaves to all the myriad of things that are always happening to us. Lord, there will always have something happening. Let it happen. God, may we simply rejoice because we get to have another moment following Jesus, whether we receive anything or not. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.